Hey, what's up, we a family? Welcome back to our channel. Please join us for part two of our sandals grenade adventure. Tune in to see what we did the rest of our trip. You're sure to be entertained. We are up at the crack of dawn <laughs> to go and do this snuba. Boat leaves 6 a.m. So. Let me get it. Snuba starts what time? Uh, too early. <laughs> yeah, so Snuba starts at 6 a.m. So we set our alarm clocks for 5.15. Mm -hmm. And we are now on our way to make the boat. So Snuba. Yes, Snuba, not Scuba. I said it right. Snuba. S N U B A. What is it? Well, snuba is a cross between snorkeling and scuba diving. You don't have to get certified for it, but if you're lucky, you'll get at least some practice in the pool or something before you're out in the open ocean. Basically, there's an oxygen tank that floats on the surface of the water and tubing that extends about 20 feet away from that tank. So it allows you to descend about 20 feet into the ocean to get a little bit closer to the ocean floor and closer to the reefs. So here at the Aqua Center, you can see Sandals has all kinds of complimentary things for guests to use. Life vests, hobby cats, uh, paddle boards. What are those things called? Catamarans, kayaks. Only thing is you do have to buy your own snorkel gear if you're not going on a guided snorkel tour. This was our first time to Grenada and I am not a certified scuba diver, but I had no idea that Grenada was world renowned for all of their wrecks and diving sites. Look at all those things that there are to explore under the sea here. We are the solid yellow star on the map and we went to number four here which is the Molinaire Sculpture Park which has sculptures about 15 to 30 feet under the sea but if you got some balls you can go deeper than that and you can see our boat is finally arriving to take us to our destination Grenada has such a beautiful coastline. Part of the experience is just enjoying the water and the beautiful vistas on our journey to the sculpture park. So the guys take the couples out in pairs for the snuba experience. But while you're waiting, you can snorkel at your leisure and explore some different things. The good thing is that 99% heard not to. It's just, uh, it's just open. It's just open. No. It's open. to go under. All right? So when I start putting the weights in and you start going under, don't try to keep yourself above because what's going to happen is the weight is going to pull you down while you try to keep yourself above and it's going to freak you out. Okay. Yeah? So when you start going down, just relax and let's go down. Okay. Okay? Uh -huh. So you, right now, you guys don't have any weights in. You don't have any weights in you right now. So it's impossible for you guys to sink. So you don't have to hold on to the raft right now. Go relax.
for the weights in, then we're gonna be Okay. Come on here. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna make a short swim right now. Relax. I remember just like what we're doing in a pool. Okay? okay? Not like Michael first. So as you can see, it takes a second to get used to being in this water, even though we practice in the pool. I cannot stress enough how important it is to get out of your own head when you're breathing under the water. This part was so cool. I felt like a real badass. <laughs> I will say the water clarity and the visibility was uh, not exactly what I was expecting. Uh, the camera shows it a little more blue, um, but it wasn't that clear. Shortly after we got started, we had to come up at least twice to catch air and get oriented. So two minutes in, now I'm feeling a little bit like I suck at this. Sure. I think I'm but it's like, I can't relax. So by this point, Neil decided he was going to stay on the surface and essentially have a snorkeling type of snoob adventure. I myself was able to take on a couple weights and descend down a little bit deeper with our guide. So Grenada's Molinaire Underwater Sculpture Park, I think I said that right, is one of National Geographic's 25 wonders of the world. It was first installed in 2006. It includes over 75 different artistic works that cover an area of approximately 800 square meters. And it's only accessible by boat. The sculptures range at different depths of the ocean floor between around 12 feet to as deep as 30 feet. Those human figures on the ocean floor are Grace Reef. They're about 12 feet deep. This underwater sculpture park was not only created because of its beauty and to be artistic, but also intended to contribute to the environmental sustainability of the bay and offer a habitat for marine life like coral, algae, fish. Now, there has been some debate as to the intention of the park. When I first learned of the Grenada Underwater Sculpture Park, it was my, I was in the impression that it was a memorial or a tribute dedicated to the enslaved Africans that were thrown overboard or died during their journey through the Middle Passage. However, the artist admits that he did not truly have any intention on making any connection to the Middle Passage. However, you know, he acknowledges and feels encouraged that it resonates differently amongst different groups. If you've ever been snorkeling before, it's always very interesting how the ocean floor is comprised. You have certain areas that are just full of coral and fish, and then other areas where you really don't see anything. Now, I will say on this Snoopa experience, we did see tons and tons of, of fish, flounder. Um, it was pretty cool. Now, the boat ride to this Snoopa experience was probably about 15 minutes from Sandals Resort. And each couple had about 30 minutes of time to swim down and explore the ocean floor. 
there were a couple couples that were pretty adventurous. I mean, they swam all the way down and were sitting with the sculptures and snapping pictures. We weren't that adventurous, or <laughs> I would say we were a little bit scared. So as you see me pinching my nose quite a bit, I had a little bit of leak of water coming through my mask. Also, squeezing your nose helps to equalize the pressure in your ears when you blow out. As you descend down when you're snuba diving, you get all of that pressure on your ears and honestly, it kind of hurts. Now, if this sculpture park was to memorialize the enslaved being thrown overboard, do you think that would make this experience a little bit more creepy as these would kind of represent dead people <laughs> i don't know i i kind of thought it was cool to have a tribute to them but then at the same time it could be kind of construed as a little bit morbid when you're underwater you have to get used to hand gestures because that's the only way you can really communicate if all things are good or if there's a problem okay sign means just that everything's a-okay look at my honey on the surface <laughs> And that pretty much concludes what we saw under the water. There was another couple that were so lucky that not only did they see some lobsters down there, but they also found an octopus. Keep watching to see uh, the octopus in their hands. So after we got back from our snuba experience, the butlers really know how to make you feel special and take extra special care of you. So they put together a nice little warm bath for us in the soaker tub. Look, isn't that so cute? The champagne and flowers adds another little special touch. So I'm going to take you on a brief little tour of some of the grounds of Sandals. This is some of the landscaping in the Pink Gin area. I don't want to record anybody on their porch. So we have the Pink Gin village to the left and the beach to the right. We decided to go get some lunch. So this day we had, I think, lunch at Neptune's. I'm sure we had lunch at Neptune's probably four or five times during our stay at Sandals. Food's pretty good here. I highly recommend the grilled mahi. That was delicious. But have everything on the menu if you like. It's all included. Is it only on vacation that you stop to take in the little things? Look at all of these tiny little crabs everywhere. And these little things right here, what are they? Can anybody tell me? Please comment below if you know what these things are. Nice windy day. It's beautiful. 
We are going to do a casual little boat ride up the coast. Since it's COVID, we can't really go into the island and interact with any of the islanders. So we're gonna do a little leisurely boat cruise up the coast. It's gonna point out some facts about the island and give us a little bit of history. Give you guys a sneak peek. Stay tuned. Recognize that boat? Yeah. Same boat for Snuba. Same boat for snorkeling. That's the glass bottom boat too. Huh? Even though it has no glass bottom. So you can get a nice view of what Sandals looks like from the coastline. The owner's mansion atop the bluff there. And also, if you pay attention in the background, those flags represent all of the countries that Sandals has a resort in. Rewind. Let's look at that mansion again. Can you imagine coming to Sandals Grenada and having your own private mansion on the mountaintop? Must be nice. Now we're about mm, 10 minutes down the coastline. You can see some more mansions up on the bluff. So according to our tour guide, Grenada is the largest exporter of nutmeg and is world renowned for all the spices that can be found in Grenada and hence they go by the nickname the Spice Island. Now one of the tourists had to correct him and say that Ghana is actually the number one exporter of nutmeg. So I don't know, you tell me, who's the winner with nutmeg? Is it Grenada? Is it Ghana? I don't know. Now Fort George is in this bay. Here we are in Grenada's port which I believe is called St. George's Port. And it accommodates both cargo, cruise ships, as well as mega yachts. And according to our tour, apparently the island of Grenada is a place that Bill and Melinda Gates love to come and vacation. Well, now they're divorced, but they, according to the tour, they would rent out a mansion um, to have total privacy and they would, um, store their yacht here in Port George. So after about 30, 45 minute cruise up the coastline to learn a little bit about Grenada's history and take in some of the vistas, we headed back to our room. Food here was absolutely delicious. So much so that Neil was actually pissed that they saved it for last because he really wanted to eat here more than once. Lobster mac and cheese for me. What's your, what's your, what's your name? What is that name? Uh, some kind of pumpkin soup, pumpkin coconut soup. Okay, let's see your reaction when you taste it. It smells very nutmeg. It's sweet. Sweet soup? It's good. So 
special as I mentioned. The food was so good. The butter we did indeed come table. back here for a second time. Mm. Here's the Tipsy Turtle Pub. Unfortunately, we never had an opportunity to eat here. I think Sandals has six restaurants and one dessert shop. So this was our last night in Sandals, unfortunately, but the butlers were so kind to leave us cute little heart swans on our bed to wish us safe journey home. So unfortunately, that pretty much concludes our time here at Sandals Grenada. Thanks guys for watching. Comment below if you have any questions. Also, please like, subscribe, and share this video if you're enjoying our content and you want us to keep making more. The remainder of this video is just going to be some aerial shots of the island if you just want to take in the last little bits of beauty this island has to offer. Hey guys, if you're interested, skip ahead to minute 25 if you're interested in seeing the map and layout of Sandals Grenada Resort. Also, there's some information that includes what Sandals is doing to keep us safe during the time of COVID and how they're cleaning and sterilizing the rooms.
If you read closely, Sandals certifies that your room is cleaned hospital grade sanitation using electrical aerosol sprays and also UV light. They're using a sanitizer or disinfectant on all hard surfaces in the bathroom. Furthermore, according to this, they sanitize and steam all of the fabric, such as the carpets, the ottoman, to make sure it's clean for us.